I want to take a minute and just tell you about my Christianity. In fact, it's related to my Sunday morning skate thing. I'm not going to try to persuade you and get a proselyte out of you. Um, in fact, let, hold on. Let me show you the back of my shirt. What I do, I'd love, love to sell this t-shirt. Um, I skate Sunday morning. I think it's the best thing to do on Sunday morning. I Look, the walkway movement's figured out that there have been a lot of lies about the Democrat Party. Now, conservative voters have known for a long time there's a lot of lies about the Republican Party. People are scratching their heads, wondering, Republicans are acting like Republicans. Republicans never act like Republicans. It's like, wait, you, you Republican politicians, like, who are you and what have you done with the normal fake Republicans? Like, what's going on? Like, that's, that's a thing. There's a lot that's misrepresented about Jesus. There's this idea that Sunday morning represents Jesus. People like Jesus, believe in Jesus, agree with Jesus, or they don't like Jesus, they disagree with Jesus, they don't believe in Jesus, all based on Sunday morning. The thing is, you've got these, these Jesus people and these anti-Jesus people, and they're for Jesus or anti-Jesus, all because of whether they're for or anti-Sunday morning. And I'm like, hold on, wait, Sunday morning isn't Jesus. Like everything that people get irritated about Christians for, it's because of Sunday morning. They got to keep going back. They got to pay money for the bills. They, they, they got to keep getting people to keep paying money for the bills. And so they form this little mini cult. They've got their own way of talking that's weird. They form different groups and they talk differently and they get together and they use the same words but have different meanings and they argue and don't know that they agree but they think they disagree because they're, you know, uh, uh, pardon my French. Like, you know, like that's, uh, that's one of the old problems is the system of Sunday morning. It causes those Christians to act weird in ways that a lot of people don't like. Well, Jesus is far too big to fit into the Sunday morning box that people want to cram him into. Now, Sunday morning made sense in an age when most people couldn't read and write, when there wasn't the ability to, to make recordings of audio, uh, let alone video, but just audio recordings. And, you know, a transportation was a thing. Well, n nowadays, you know, we've got internet, People need to travel. So you got you got instant communication. You've got audio recordings. People can read on their own, thanks to the, the pilgrims in the north. The pilgrims found in the northern colonies. Everyone could read and write for the first time in the world. They, it was all, all homeschool, 1600s. A breakthrough. The, the pilgrims taught their children to read and write so that they could read the Bible on their own without the priest telling them what it meant. Again, you know, they, the, the pilgrims did not want the government-approved priest telling them what to think about the Bible. That was the idea of the pilgrims in the North. In the South, you had England and slavery and stuff. Fortunately, the pilgrims landed on Plymouth Rock, found in the North and ended slavery. And so that's the whole thing. Um, no, no, we did land on Plymouth Rock and Plymouth Rock landed on slavery. That's, that's, that's a little lie. Mm. It needs to be cleared up. Sunday morning is not the definition of Jesus, whether you agree with him or disagree. So I, George Barna uh, is a Christian researcher. He observed about uh, 13, 15, 2005, several years ago, that many Christians loved Jesus a lot and therefore they were leaving Sunday morning. Like this was a thing. I studied Bible in college and I want you to know what I'm telling you, I've been saying for 10 years. I, and what I'm going to tell you, I'm, I'm not saying this to brag. I, I want you to understand something. I've got about a million words in circulation. Now, uh, I've got maybe about a quarter of a million words from periodicals of Pacific Daily Times that I started. And I've got about three quarters of a million words available in print on demand and the main ebook platforms, uh, print on demand from Amazon. And uh, that, that's that been written over the course of about 10 years. And those have been available. And I've said all this stuff in those writings. So what I'm saying is not anything new. I've been saying it on my podcast. I've had that for many years. And now I'm starting to focus on YouTube. I'm just saying this not for the first time, but for the first time, loudly, clearly on YouTube. Okay. So my Christianity is a Christianity on the inside. It's, it's, not a, it's not a culture thing. It's not a liturgy thing. I believe in the God of the universe who made us, and, and I don't try to recruit people. I don't believe in it. I don't have a building to keep funding every week. I'm not a pastor on payroll, so I don't have to get minions who are going to be my, my loyal subscription customers and call it the gospel and Christian fellowship and all that jazz. I don't, I don't do that. 
I just live my Christianity. Now, I want you to try to, I'm not trying to persuade you of this. I don't try to persuade people. Fine, believe whatever you want. I live my life. I'll explain why I live my life this way. This is what I'm thinking. Okay, so I explain what I'm thinking to people and I live my life. That's it. I really don't care a rat's patouche if you agree with it or not. I love you. I try to be nice to you and help you. You believe what you want. Now, if you try to tell me or someone tries to tell me that all dogs go to heaven and that there's no difference between Satan and God and that all religions, the good and the bad, the, the murderous and the compassionate, that all religions, including Satan worship, are all praising the God, the creator of the universe, I'm going to tell you you're full of it. No, there are differences. There, there, there is light and darkness. There's black and white. There's red and blue. There are different things. We're not all identical. Um, so people tell me that. I don't, I don't shout them down, but I don't do the silences consent thing. I'll say, um, no, no, I, 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 I don't agree. Um, there, there are good and bad. Uh, there, there are religions that follow Satan and religions that follow God. And the ones that follow Satan are self-destructive, dangerous, harmful, and the source of evil in the world. And there are, there are differences. Okay. But I won't, I won't elaborate long on that. I'll just state my opinion and what I believe, and then I'll drop it. I'm, my evidence, my argument is my life. I believe that God, the creator of the universe, Jesus who fulfilled, he, he completed the sacrifices of the Old Testament in himself. Sacrifice the Old Testament, there was no Jesus yet. So this was a temporary sacrifice thing to bring some order in this earth of darkness. And Jesus followed all those rules in himself. It was a self-sacrifice. He wasn't sacrificing someone else. It was a human sacrifice. It was ultimate. He was sinless. It was a sinless sacrifice. He didn't have a father, so nothing biologically passed sin onto him. That's a whole other thing. And Jesus himself died. And when he died, the temple curtain was ripped. That, that barrier, God's in here. You come in, you die. That temple separating it was ripped because God went everywhere. Sunday morning isn't useful. Not, not, not with the internet and widespread literacy and, and audio video recordings. We don't need Sunday morning. We don't need liturgy. We don't need routine. We don't need to kneel a certain way. We don't need to make some symbol or whatever while we're praying. There's a, there's a kid here in Asia, Roy, you, I, I tell him, well, let's go walk and pray. And he goes, what? You can walk and pray? I'm like, I've been telling you, you don't need institutions. You don't need structures, buildings, formal, whatever, your liturgies. You don't need that to pray. Jesus ended it. It's all gone. Wherever there's oxygen, you can go and pray, and it's equally valid as any other prayer anywhere else. Uh, that's my Christianity. And I believe that on the inside of my heart, if I think about that God, him in his glory, on his throne, with his power, I'm having turbulence here in my little tiny little life, and it seems enormous to little, old, tiny, puny me. For here I am in this puny turbulence that seems bigger than my world. God is enormous, and he's just fine. And, and God allows me to have this little turbulence to teach me and to make me stronger because God's more concerned about me being awesome on the inside than me being super fat and comfortable and being a bad person. He, he wants me to become stronger and better. God wants me to be compassionate. When my life is hard, God wants me to focus on helping someone else instead of helping myself when life is hard for me. He wants me to be a super strong person. I don't mean helping to the point where it's, it's free handouts and you mess someone else up, making them think that they're entitled. That's not what I mean, help. But, but going out of our way to provide people with something that they genuinely need. And, and, and helping them in a way that, that help won't do damage. I mean, his mom always said, help me, don't help me. Okay. But I, I think about God in his glory and his constant power on the inside so that the outside world doesn't bother me. 
And from that, my heart is in touch with the reality that I can't see. And so my heart is in touch with the greater reality. And that makes me a loving, happy person because I acknowledge the creator and I acknowledge Jesus that got rid of all this religious jazz. He just died and he said, it is done. And now go live your life. God is in your heart. If you believe him, you've got to welcome him. God's a gentleman. He's not in everyone's heart, only the hearts that welcome him. You don't want God? Fine. Uh, I believe it was C.S. Lewis, but I want to think it was someone else, said there are two types of people in the world. Those whom at the end of their lives say to God, thy will be done. And those whom at the end of their lives, God says to them, thy will be done. So you believe what you want. I will not try to convert you. I live my life. I, 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 try, to, I, I try to be awesome toward other people. I take time to think about God, the creator in my heart. And I just had a lady uh, call me on the phone and she knows that I'm Christian, but I don't try to persuade her. I'm not out to get people to pay for my building every week or my salary. I'm, I'm not out to do that. Well, she had parked her little BMW. I love, I'm a BMW fan, by the way. She parked her little BMW out on the road and, and she clipped a, a, a thing on the road. I won't, doesn't matter. Clipped it. Her bumper snapped off. She didn't know it. Drove home. Something seemed wrong to her. She took a shower. All of a sudden, she realized <gasps> the bumper's missing on my car. Got in her car, drove back. An hour had passed. The bumper had been sitting in the road the whole time. On the way there, she said, Jesus, if my bumper's still there, I'll believe in you. She gets there. The bumper's still there. Not a scratch. Been sitting in the road an hour. Just fine. Got it. Snapped it back on. Not a scratch. She had to call me and tell me about it. I've had many stories like this. I don't try to go get people to believe Jesus. I just live my life. All right. I want to, th that's my Christianity. This is 12 minutes. I want to wrap this up by telling you something about Christians. If, if, if you're not interested, you know, please don't troll. Um, you can stop the video here, but I'm going to tell you what's happening with Christians. There are Christians all over the world. Zach Hing, Zach Hing, H-I-N-G, he's one of them. Um, Earl Hall is one of them. There, there are a number of Christians. I am one of them. God has had us in a place where we weren't famous. We were working, we were learning, we were growing in our character. And there is a time that's coming right now. We're in the beginning of this when Christians will be celebrated in the world. You will begin to see how incredibly effective our Christianity is. And I'm, I'm not talking law of attraction nonsense. There's some truth to the law of attraction, but that's for three-year-olds. I, I mean, I have ways of viewing life that are rooted in the Bible that are much more advanced than that. And I'm, I'm developing my own life coaching curriculum. It'll include some free videos on YouTube. It's already got some motivational poster stuff. AvenueGuru.1. Instead of .com, it's one. AvenueGuru. And I'm, there'll be a book. I'm, I'm developing that for, for how I view life. And, and it's, it's secular. It's neither Christian or non-Christian. It's just a way to view life. There's not, I don't think there's any Bible in it at all. Um, but it's, it's based in, in how I view life. But I, I keep God as a separate discussion. But I, I view life in this, this way. And however you look at life, Christians have some things in their hearts and a lot of Christians have been pulled out of the Sunday morning thing to a deep, real, uh, I could say, it sounds cliche, relationship with Jesus directly. No Sunday morning nonsense involved. They read the Bible. They know the Bible. Jesus is with them everywhere they go. And they are going to be following just those basic teachings, not the fake misunderstanding of Jesus or the Bible, but they read the Bible, they take it to heart, they live like it's real, and the evidence is in their lives. And God has been hiding that evidence. He's been keeping them, and you could say it's like winter, like you don't, you don't grow, you don't sow, you don't harvest. There's, there's no farm work at all in winter, but that's when roots of trees grow deep looking for water. So summer comes, wind blows, and the trees don't fall down. God has been strengthening those Christians where you can't see it on the inside. And now we're in a time where he's going to let that come, come out and he's going to show the world how incredibly valuable it is 
to follow the God of the Bible. Not this universalism jazz, but the God of the Bible who loves all and Chris, they're just going to be nice people. They're not going to be out to get people. This is coming and this is just starting. I'm, I am part of this, but there are many, 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 and you're going to see more. Now, here's what's going to happen. After about 10 years, I mean, these Christians are going to become amazing. They're like, like it's going to be blow your mind. It's you. I mean, no, no success tips, no positive mental attitude would ever, has ever gotten anyone to the level that you're going to see Christians rise to in the next 10 years. I know this sounds like, Jesse, what are you talking about? I, I li look, I live in the world of tomorrow. I'm telling you what's happening. These Christians are going to rise to a high level of respect in society. And then people all over the world are going to understand who Jesus is. Jesus and whether or not he's effective, that question is going to be thoroughly answered. And there will be many, 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 many Christians. Then, all right, you know, God's, God's focused on eternity. God, where this life is preparing us for the next better life. So God's going to call it. And there will pretty much only be Christians and anti-Christians. There will not be non-Christians. There will not be people that aren't sure about Jesus. That question is going to be pretty much dealt with. You're going to have Christians and anti-Christians. They're going to really hate these Christians. And they're even to help their own lives, they're not going to buy it. That's ridiculous. I'm not buying it. No way. And they will be anti-Christian. And it's going to be polarized in society. This is coming. And then there will be, the people will attack Christians. The Christians will respond um, in their, their way, which is, you know, you will see. Um, it will be, there will be some power. There will be some self-sacrifice. Um, you'll, you'll see what that is. More people will become Christians watching how they conduct themselves. And in that, the Antichrist will rise. Um, Antichrist is showing up, taking world stages here. Uh, he's around. I'm not going to um, say much about that. Um, you know, you've got to pray and know God. We've got Christians that have been preparing in God, who've been studying God, following God for decades. And all of a sudden you're seeing them. If you haven't been reading your Bible and studying and understanding God for decades, then you're not going to have wisdom that comes with it. You learn something every day after time you know more about it. So if you're new, if you suddenly become Christian, guess what? You're new and you don't have decades of having pursued God. And there's going to be a lot of stuff you're just not going to understand. So whatever questions you've got in your heart, work it out. Hurry up and start studying because time's coming. And if you don't do your work, you're not going to learn. If you don't study, you're not going to know. If you don't practice, you're not going to be skilled. And there are people who have been studying and understanding God for years, and they look at the world and they go, oh, oh, that's the Antichrist. And they see him now. And if you don't, the answer is not to ask them to think for you. You've got to become a thinker and understand life. So answer whatever questions you've got in your heart. Antichrist is going to show up. And as one of my friends says, it's going to be uh, the empire strikes back. Um, the anti-Christians are going to attack the Christians, wound them terribly. God's going to let it happen because he wants, as strong as he's made those Christians, he wants to make them even stronger. It's like hammering the metal of a sword. You know, into the cold water, heat it up and hammer it. Into the cold water, heat it up and hammer it. Hot, cold, hot, cold. You know, prosperity and comfort, pain and difficulty. Prosperity and comfort, pain and difficulty. Expand, contract, expand, contract. God's doing this to make his Christians stronger. Once you go to the next life, learning is more difficult. God wants these Christians in this day to learn as much as they can. People are going to get on board. They're going to have time to learn also. God is going to put us through the fire and the cold. And the Christians will become very strong. That's his priority. So I'm telling you this now. When the empire strikes back and when the anti-Christians attack the Christians and hurt them, it's not defeat. God's making them stronger Jesus will come back and Jesus himself will kill that Antichrist. He won't stand a chance. This is not, when, when the anti-Christian movement attacks the Christians 20 years from now, I don't know, um, it's not defeat. It's not, it's not defeat. It's tactics. You've been told. All right, but I don't need to emphasize that too much. Um, I'm calm and my God is in control and that's my Christianity. And uh, full disclosure here, I'm not trying to persuade you. Look, if, if you're not Christian, 
um, I wouldn't try to persuade you. You know, um, tell me what you think. Put in the comments, if you watch this far, do you want me to talk about homosexuality? Um, d d gender identity, same-sex marriage, all that stuff. Do you want me to talk about that? Tell me. If, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to talk about it unless I get a lot of comments from people that have watched this video this far and said in the comments that they want it. Uh, so we'll see how serious people are. You know, those guys that watch the video for 10 minutes, get bored and tune it out. Sorry, you missed your chance to find out what I think about those things. So we'll see. So thank you for watching this. And, um, you know, do make sure every day you tell yourself to grow up. We all need to do that. And, and you know, be, be cool. Be a chap. Go over to guys.com and order a shirt or go to Patreon. Uh, subscribe for $15 or more and, and you'll get uh, whatever the current shirt is uh, every month. Uh, currently, the shirt is behind me. Uh, this, this is the shirt right now, but you can go order this at Guys. Uh, love you. Bye.